Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we take a look at Vector Championship Run, which was a 1991 release from Zeppelin Games and Impulse, the Z, developed by Chris Robson. It's a first-person perspective cockpit view Formula One style racing game, which was still relatively unusual at the time, and it features fully polygonal 3D graphics, hence the name. Polygon graphics were often referred to as vector graphics in the 8 and 16-bit home computer eras due to their association with vector display arcade games such as Star Wars, which helped to pioneer the use of polygonal graphics. It just happened to be on a vector monitor. This game was not especially well received back in the day, with the only positive reviews coming from the Australian Commodore and Amiga review magazine and French magazine Joystick. Everyone else seemed to pretty much hate it. ST Formats Review criticised the tracks for, I quote, looking like something you'd find at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the unfair behaviour of the rival cars. They also said, I quote, the graphics aren't bad, there are no circles on screen. But it's not bad. <laughs> Update is rapid and the colours are attractive. Steering the car takes a lot of getting used to and it's nigh on impossible to wreck your car. But all that apart, it's a great game. Their rating, 40%. Great indeed. So, let's go play, what's it called? Vector Championship Run. Okay, here we are with Vector Championship Run from Impulse and Zeppelin. Now, um, looking into this, it seems that this is... It's not a port, but I guess it's a sort of spiritual successor to a game just called Championship Run on the Spectrum. Uh, it's a completely different game, though. It doesn't really have anything to do with the original. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that because... Although the title screen and the packaging and most other things about this game refer to it as Vector Championship Run... Um, the game's title screen itself just calls itself Championship Run. Uh, so this is both a V game and a C game, as it were. So yes, um, this is an interesting game. It's not an amazing game by any means, but it's, I also don't think it's as bad as some of the reviews from the period um, made out. Um, because what you have to remember is 1991, polygonal races were still relatively rare. Uh, like Virtua Racing didn't come out until 1992, so this was a year before that. I feel like I forget the exact date that Namco did um, Winning Run, I think it was called, uh, but I feel like this is an attempt to kind of clone Winning Run because a lot of things about the perspective and the way it's presented and indeed the the, the name of it kind of bring Winning Run to mind. Um, but anyway, I, I I don't think this is I don't think this is as bad a game as some of the reviews on the period made out. It's by no means the best racing game you're ever going to play, but what you have to bear in mind is this was early days for the polygonal racer. So let us let me just move that out of the way so we've got a bit of space and let's play. So you begin by choosing your transmission between automatic and gears. If you're doing all manual gears, then you use A and Z on the keyboard to change up and down. Uh, I'm going to stick with automatic for now. And you can choose to do a race or just a solo practice. We'll do a race for now. And then you pick a course to start on. And this game is all mouse control, so no joystick in this one. Um, it's all mouse control, so uh, you will see what that means in just a moment. Right, the nice thing is, you'll see that we're straight into the race. Straight into the race with no loading. Um, there is quite a long initial load time on this game. But that does mean that there's no loading once it's started, which is really nice. Now, the criticism I quoted about the course is looking like they're at Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, relate to those stripy barriers down the side of the road because the reviewer in question felt that that made the course look rather more like a go-kart track than a real-life race course so while the sort of layout of the corners and everything might be reasonably accurate There is little to no effort being made with um, roadside scenery here, which is fine, which is fine, because it does keep the frame rate up quite nicely. I mean, obviously we're not talking sort of crazy beautiful 60 frames a second here or anything, but the frame rate here is actually pretty respectable. Uh, 
particularly when you consider there weren't a lot of racing games like this around at the time. Now the main trouble with this game is it's really really bloody hard. The handling does take a little bit of getting used to. Because it, it's not quite it's not quite the same as the vanishing point race where you're just moving from side to side on the course, but it also just doesn't quite feel right in a 3D space either. You sort of feel like you're kind of turning around the middle of your car rather than steering the front of your car. And that feels a little bit odd at times. And also obviously using non-centering mouse control takes a bit of adjusting too as well. But again, once you start to figure all that out, you can actually... Oops. You can actually handle this quite convincingly. It is a game where you need to break, though. And you've probably also seen the other criticism there, which is that the opponent cars do not give a shit if you're just standing there. If you're sitting in the road having suffered a crash... They are going to drive straight through you, and they're not going to suffer a bit for it, so... That's just how the game works, that's just something you're going to have to learn to deal with. Now, those car models are actually pretty nice as well. Especially when you consider the car models that we see in some other... Whoops. Some other polygonal races of this era, like Stunt Car Racer and so on. Stunt Car Racer is an amazing game, of course. Um, but its car models are dreadful. <laughs> but that's okay, because the tracks are so intricate in that one. Right, not last place. But sadly, not enough to qualify. So you have to finish in the top four to progress to the next race in this. Let's try a different course. Let's have a go at Detroit. So you see, again, we have those high barriers around the outside of the track. Not a lot in the way of trackside detail, aside from those road signs, which are very helpful, to be fair. And also the bitmap horizon image is different for each course as well. Although not necessarily appropriate. Like you will have noticed that the Silverstone course we were racing on previously had sort of giant mountains in the background, which is... Uh, while we do have a few tall mountains in the UK, we're not really known for it. Ow. But there are things to praise about this game. Like I say, the road signs are, are great. They give you proper good warning of upcoming corners. The course map in the top left is very helpful. The car models are very good. The handling, once you get used to it, is pretty good. Although, like I say, that is a bit of a, a, bit of a caveat that you have to get used to it. That sucks, the way they drive through you and don't suffer for it. <laughs> but as an early effort at creating an arcade style polygonal racer at a budget price, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. And you may well find yourself asking, well, why, why would I play this when Jeff Crammon's Formula One Grand Prix exists? And I mean, yes, that's a valid question. But they're also catering to 
a different style of gameplay. Like this is this is very much arcade style racing. This is very much simplistic arcade style racing where you don't have to think about a lot of things aside from just getting around those corners. Oh dear. Whereas Formula One Grand Prix prides itself quite rightly on being a detailed and graphically impressive simulation of Formula One racing. And while yes, that's good, that's not always necessarily what you want. Sometimes you want a game that's just pick up and play, choose a course and start racing and finish in 10th place. <laughs> In some respects, though, I think the difficulty in this kind of makes sense. Because although you're supposed to be working your way through a series of races and sort of winning a championship or whatever, at heart, this is designed in a similar way to an arcade game. Where it's sort of assumed that you're not going to spend a lot of time on a single session with it. And as such, it shouldn't be something that you could beat immediately. Because if you could, you'd just win every race immediately and then have absolutely no reason to return to this game ever again. Whereas if it strikes a decent balance between being difficult and fair which I'm not sure this has got quite right particularly with uh, with that mechanic there it certainly gives you some longevity And for a budget title in particular, that's something to be praised, I think. Whoops. Speed out the corners. It's all about speed out the corners. Hold it steady! No. Oh dear. Oh dear me. And being lapped repeatedly. Well, you know what? Ninth, that's better. That's an improvement. That is that is progress. Alright. Let's have another go. Let's try a different course. Where should we go? Let's go to San Marino. That's got a lovely long straight. And lots of bends otherwise. Go, 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 and they're off. nice long straight this is where we want to do all our overtaking and get smashed into by an opponent car and then prepare for cornering hell yeah the, the trouble with the computer opponents is that they they are not operating on AI, they're just going on rails. If you look at how they go around the corners and so on, then they are by no means subject to the same physics that you are. They're just going around the track on rails. And that means they, they simply don't have the capacity to be able to steer around you. Or to cope with a crash. So they just don't crash, apparently. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Look at me racing up the pack. Whoop, brakes. Oh, 
I'm in fifth. This is the best I've ever done. On what I assumed was the hardest track, but apparently not. Maybe I'm just better. I'm not hitting nearly as many walls as I used to. Now, getting past this bugger is going to be... There we go. So you need to... Oops! You need to kind of watch the line they're taking because they don't necessarily take a racing line. If you look, they they tend to stay on the same side of the track all the time. So if you know that the car ahead of you is going to be on the right, you just keep left to overtake them and you'll be sorted. See, like that guy there is, is just religiously sticking to the right-hand side of the track, regardless of corner. And so you just need to overtake him on the left. And sp spotting patterns like that is where this game gets interesting, because no, it's not realistic. But it is a mechanical consideration you need to bear in mind if you want to progress and beat this game. So once you're familiar with how the opponents work... Oh dear, we're losing places. Once you're familiar with how the opponents work, it's a lot easier to keep out of their way and to overtake them safely. Again, the next two cars are both white cars who stay on the right. So if I just take it... Oh no! I've got to stop hitting the walls. I'm getting too tense, that's the problem. It's my fault for thinking, I'm doing alright this time. I haven't hit any walls. Still, even if I don't get any further than the 6th or 5th, I'm, I'm happy with my progress in this race. Considering we started with a finish in 10th place. Oh! Oh! Oh, there's a 5th lap. Alright. is actually getting quite genuinely exciting now. The mouse control really works for this actually. Because there's no exaggerated skidding mechanic like there is in hard driving. There's a real sense that you're sort of throwing these cars around the corner. It's a bit like real Formula 1 cars can actually sort of if you look at how they turn, it's always quite impressive to see. All right, fourth place. Congratulations, qualified. A bit of music from Adam Gilmore there to enjoy. So that then sends us on to the next track, which I believe... I don't know which one that is, actually. Oh well, doesn't matter. We'll give it a go. This one looks like quite a fiddly one. Maybe it just sort of randomly picks one of the tracks from the available ones for your next one rather than going in a linear sequence. That would certainly provide some replay value. Yeah, that's the secret to this game. Just watch which side of the road those cars are religiously sticking to. Stay out their way. <laughs> and overtake when you have a good opportunity. And of course, don't hit the walls. Oh. 
Oh. You two are being a pain. Please remove yourself from my field of vision. Not like that. Not by driving through my field of vision. Around the corner. There we are, into fourth place. We're into qualifying territory already. Oh dear! Hitting a barrier and coming to a dead stop is not going to help us qualify, is it? Nope. Not a little too enthusiastic on that corner. Whoops. Careful. Careful. No! Too hard. <laughs> right, out of my way. No! Oh, that corner. That corner gets me every time. I'll give some props to the engine sound of this as well. It's quite a good engine sound. I mean, obviously not a patch on an actual... Oh no, we're losing places by the moment. Obviously not a patch on a proper sampled engine noise, but... In the grand scheme of Atari ST engine noises, of which there are some hideous examples out there, this is not a terrible one. The fact that it's using multiple sound channels helps. Oh dear. We're not going to qualify, are we? Again, it's my own fault for getting overconfident. No, don't you overtake me, don't you overtake- Oh no! Oh, he's lapping me, that's okay. Well, I mean, it's not, but... <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that. That's, that's decent. Like I say, not by no means the best racing game you will ever play, but when you consider the context in which it came out, that's not terrible. That's not terrible, that's quite enjoyable. The mouse controls work well, the polygonal graphics are pretty good, the frame rate is decent, it's playable. It's got a reasonable difficulty balance. I think it's it's maybe tuned slightly too hard for beginners. But once you, once you figure out those basic mechanics, like the way that the um, the opponent cars are on rails and that they stick religiously to one side of the track, once you start paying attention to stuff like that, then um, then you'll be able to progress a bit more. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with this. I was not expecting a lot from this, uh, given the reviews that I'd seen before. But I've, I've come away with that quite presently surprised with, with what it had to offer. So uh, yeah, check it out if you want to have a look at early polygonal races for the Atari ST. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.